Nope, I won't take you to the stars. Use the metal for a vote and you won't sail too far. Stop sitting in the dark, stirring metal clouds about. You will change your life forever when you figure out. The secret code, 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 Science can be tricky, it can overheat your brain. Science can be hard to chew, each bite can be a pain. Stop sitting in the dark, stirring metal clouds about. You will change your life forever when you figure out. The secret code. Stop with this nonsense. I said that I'm staying here inside and that it's for everyone's safety. But maybe it's time to think about your own safety. No need to starve yourself out, is there? Uh, I'll leave it by the doorway, please, and step back to a safe distance away. No more at the doorway. Only in exchange for an explanation. What's going on with you? Oh, okay. Come in at your own risk, then. Okay, so what's the matter here? It's, it's all about one amazing quantum experiment. It's... Um, open my eyes. In the world of atomic particles, strange things happen. For example, quantum light photons behave like waves. On the other hand, like particles. What kind of picture will we see on a photosensitive screen if we direct a photon beam on it through two slits? Hmm, two stripes? Nope. In this experiment, photons act like waves. Their vibrations through the two slits intersect and accumulate, and therefore the picture on the screen looks a little different. And this is a normal occurrence. But what if instead of a beam we direct one photon after another? Then we shouldn't see any waves intersecting and accumulating, and we should, theoretically, see two stripes on the screen. Amazingly, but even directing single photons onto the screen, we will still see the same picture. It's as if the photons are flying simultaneously through both slits, behaving like waves and intersecting and accumulating with themselves. That's some kind of quantum mystery. Can the photons truly multiply themselves? Of course not. Hmm, oh, what if we try to determine through which slit the photon flies through? What if we install some kind of detector? And that's the amazing part. Once we install a detector and determine through which slit the photon flew, then the picture changes and only two stripes remain. This experiment proves that observation affects the position of quantum particles in open space. Think about it. It appears that specifically we assign form to this world with all of its rules, physical laws, and cooperation. Okay, so what? I like this world. Me too. But it turns out that any one of us could change it with as much as the uh, strength of his imagination. Why hasn't anyone done this yet, then? Because nobody until now knew that it was possible. You see? I've covered the walls of my room with an anti-imagination layer so that I don't give in to any temptation. Let's pretend what you say is true. But you're not going to harm the universe with just your imagination. You don't know me well enough. When I was little, I was an extremely bad-mannered and even destructive child. If you could see my childhood drawings, you'd see what kinds of worlds my imagination drew. I've changed a lot since then, of course, and I've even re-educated myself. But who knows what my subconscious is capable of. So what? You're just going to sit here for all time? Because of some childhood drawings? It's the only way. Ugh. So how's our patient doing? I don't even know what to say. 
Is it true you can change something by the power of your own thought? Spin! Hmm. Forever! Hey, you there! On board the ship! Don't stop! Let me dock! <laughs> ah, welcome, space colleague, on board the sphere jet! Docko! Hey, Docko! Where are you, buddy? <laughs> Huh? He found me! Oh, and would you happen to be a relative of our Daco? You look strikingly similar. I'm so much more than a relative. I'm his clone! So fess up, Birdman, where have you hidden my Dockster? You see, Doko thought he could change the universe with the power of thought. <laughs> what? <laughs> Stop! I made this clone in some of my darker years. When I was still a young slacker, and nobody wanted to be my friend, so I made a copy of myself. Ah, we were like a gang. Yeah, we stirred up things big time. Cool. There's nothing great about it. I have since then become a better uh, person unlike you. Oh, stop your droning. I don't appreciate it. You see? He can't learn about our secret. Wait a second. Are you serious about that or something? Just like that, I can think up anything I want? Like some kind of magician? What? Why did you tell him about everything? Oh, seems like I came at just the right time. Don't even think about changing anything. I wasn't asking you. I can mess up the entire universe now. I will not allow you to do that. Friends. Why don't we calm down and have a little tea to drink? Back off, Birdman, or I'll have to calm you down. Now what can I mess up that's more interesting? Oh! How about smashing up that lamp over there? No, the light bulb will stay intact! Okay, I was just checking you. Why waste my powers on such nonsense? <laughs> now I'll choose something a little more fun. I don't understand anything, but it seems like something epic's about to happen. What is this? Let the number for pi be equal to four. How awful. No, let the number pi be equal to 3.14. You like that, huh? Then let's let the phrase rule of thumb no longer apply to the hand, but to the foot instead. Let it be like it was earlier. What kind of quantum physics is this? As if there weren't enough other problems around. E equals MC cubed. Ha <laughs> You're insane. E equals MC squared. Spheroscope. Spheroscope. And I say E equals MC cubed. E equals MC squared. No way. Cube, 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 cube. Stop it right now. Protons rotate around electrons. Electrons rotate around protons. Oh boy. This looks like the most boring battle of good and evil in all of history. Hmm. How do I ask this? Explain, please, how photons behave so strangely in that experiment with two slits, and someone watching. Uh, could you somehow explain in simpler terms, maybe? All right, Daco. That's it. If you don't want to do this the easy way, then we'll do it the hard way. <laughs> Chico, let's bolt! Electricity doesn't exist. Electricity does exist. If electricity exists, then we both die an electro death. So be it. But I won't allow you to run amok in my universe. Oh, maybe we should stop them. How? If they can change the universe with just the power of thought. Can't stop that. Friends, stop this buffoonery, please. I found out that not everything works like Daco thinks it does. Don't make me angry, Birdman, or I'll turn you into a frog. Ribbit, Stop ribbit. Stop this now! Doc, you're a loser. Together we could control the entire universe. Not in present company. Relax, guys. 
Quantum physics doesn't work the way like you want it to. The quantum world and all its relationships arose long before the appearance of our civilization. And it's not about to change just because of a few observers, hmm, who incidentally also consist of quantum particles. Quantum particles are neither spheres nor waves. Those are only approximations to describe them mathematically and envision them somehow. But we'll never be able to imagine what they actually look like because we'll never see anything remotely similar in our macro world. And of course, in the quantum world, our normal logic doesn't work. Different rules apply here, and they can't be understood using our experience. What's firing the photons, the plate with the slits, the photosensitive screen? These are all parts of one system. The particles behave themselves identically, irregardless of whether they are fired one by one or in a stream. From this, we get the identical wave pattern on the screen. And when the observer is introduced, he also becomes a part of the system and just brings about a change in the result. Logically, it's not possible to understand quantum physics. We can only use it. But that it's impossible to change the universe with the power of your thoughts, I can guarantee you. Phenomenal. A weight lifted from my shoulders. The universe is now safe. Yeah, what a joke. You nerds are boring me to death. Your physics is about nothing, and so is your universe. Yeah, and you, Daco, you're as boring as a textbook. Ugh. Eh, whatever. It's all good. Hasta la vista, baby. Until my clone changes, he seems doomed to be very lonely. It's hard to disagree with that, my friend. Wow, look! How long do you think it can spin for? Huh. Hmm. Well, like I said, in quantum physics, there's still a lot that's unexplained. My favorite with cabbage leaves? Afraid not! <laughs> you are the only one who loves cakes with cabbage leaves, but New Year's a holiday for everyone! Not this time. Not this time. Redo it all. There's still time before midnight. No salutes on New Year's. I can't take all these flashes and noise. <laughs> take it all away. Take it all away. Wally! What do you order people around here for? By the power vested in me by the incoming new year, I forgive your ignorance. Someone might not make it to the new year. Ah, will somebody please explain to Rosa that in the upcoming new year, I will have immunity. You don't look immune to me. What are, what are you teasing me? Why, what year do you think is about to start? Um... 2000 and, um... No, it's the year of the blue wooden sheep. It is my year, mine. What don't you understand? Wally, I'm sorry, but in my opinion, you weren't even a sheep at all. But we can easily make you blue. <laughs> I am more sheep than all of you together. My New Year's friend, are you one of those, um, those people? Who are these people? One of those who believe in all that unscientific nonsense. My friend, that just isn't serious. Here we are, you understand, plowing through open space, and you're carrying on with all these old superstitions. You mean I have no special status? And there won't be any special gifts? <laughs> I thought this would be a special new year. Hey, only a few minutes left until New Year. I want something to eat. Mm, I'm really hungry. Give me a piece of that. What, what do we have there? Only five minutes left. Daco, tell us something about New Year's. As only you can. Well, if you insist, I could tell you about, for example, parallel universes. New Year's is a big holiday for us. 
But for the universe, one year is but a split second, because it is, after all, older than 13 billion years. It was that many years ago that there was a Big Bang which gave rise to our world. Scattered particles flew into atoms and atoms into molecules, from which later entire clouds of cosmic dust were formed. Fast forward a billion years and those clouds have turned into galaxies. The bright strip of stars in our sky is the galaxy in which we live. Ancient Greeks called this strip the Milky River, or the Milky Way. And milk in Greek is galaxies. It was from this that we started referring to large clusters of stars as galaxies. Despite the fact that the Big Bang happened a long time ago, galaxies continue to fly apart at an enormous rate. The farther away a galaxy is from Earth, the faster it moves away from us. This theory was discovered by astronomer Edwin Hubble. It means that at some distance from Earth, there are galaxies which are flying away from us at the speed of sound. This distance is called Hubble's radius and it indicates that we will never see the worlds beyond the boundaries of Hubble's radius, since light from them simply can't reach us. Alas, the size of the visible part of our universe is only 93 billion light years. Our entire universe can be conditionally divided into such Hubble spheres. And if we assume that space-time is infinite, then due to the theory of probability, somewhere along those worlds there is an exact copy of ours or, as they say, a parallel universe. But we'll never see it at all, insofar as every year it's flying farther and farther. Cool! It's already midnight! Cheekster, preparation level D1! Always ready! Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five! Another silly New Year's. Just the same as all the other previous ones. I wish I were in some kind of parallel universe instead. doing in Rose's room? Uh, 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 what is this? Where, uh, where, where are my horns? Uh, where are they? Here, Here we are. are. Velma. Uh, 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 uh. Printing and printing already. Holy carrots. You're such a sweetheart. Promise me that New Year's will be as lovely as you are. Let's go. Everyone's already waiting for you. And here is the start of tonight's festivities. Oh, how delightful. Yeah, yeah. That is fantastic. I'm sleeping. Oi. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you don't want to sleep through New Year's, do you, cutie? Well, that would be incredibly sad. Well, what's going on here? Is this some kind of prank? Why do you all look like... Ah. Like overdressed princesses. Only Velma is truly beautiful. Beautiful as always. And here's the New Year's cake, you pranksters! Oh, Oinga. At least everything with you still the same. Oh, <laughs> what could happen to me? <laughs> There you go, with cabbage leaves, just for you. Holy carrots! Time to give gifts to the New Year's girl! Oh, yes. And did you know? Yes, you know. You'll never lose that way. Stop it! That's enough! This is too peculiar, New Year's. I don't want this. I liked you better earlier. So, have we changed? Did we gain weight? No, not that. The other yous. From the other universe. 
Doko, what were you talking about, parallel universes? I'm sorry, are you talking to me? I'm Donna. Whatever. What, what's the deal with those circles and galaxies and with the stars? Ah, uh, stars. I can tell you your horoscope. Spheroscope. Should still be spheroscope in this universe. Then, or whoever you are, where is it? I don't understand. That round gift that, from the future that a horse gave you. Oh, darling, are you talking about that wonderful New Year's toy that Colt gave her? Yeah, yeah, my cult is so romantic. Oh. Nine! You broke that gift from my cult! How can I get back to my own world? Your request is too vague. But I got here somehow through that uh, uh, big black thingamajig. A black hole is a space object with extremely strong gravitational attraction. All objects produce a curve in the time-space continuum with their gravitational field. The larger the object, the stronger the curvature. The mass of a black hole is so large that its distortion of space and time can be visualized in the form of a bottomless funnel. A black hole's pull is so strong that even quantum light cannot escape. Therefore, you can't see a black hole. Upon hitting a black hole, all information about its existence is erased and can't be restored, as its physical characteristics are still poorly understood. Distortion of space and time. I don't understand what it is, but it sounds promising. Set a course for a black hole. Forgive me, sweetheart, but the helm won't tolerate a female's touch. That's how! <laughs> no! no. A single ray of light Everyone waiting for some holy sight Five minutes left my oh my Time truly does pass us by Driving was so fun. Oh, Pin's gonna be furious at us for taking his ship. Oh, relax, Chico. Uh, he should thank me for making sure everything works. Uh, Check it out. We're here. It's Crash Island. You should probably sit, you know. That's not very safe. Your steering is what's not safe. Heck, I think of it as artistic flying. 
so where are we? Holy carrots! An uninhabited island all for us! Okay, we need to be prepared for what we could find in this place. Like dinosaurs or tooth fairies. Maybe I'll find confidence in our life choices. I knew it. We're right back where we started, in a heap of trouble. Not so fast. We only circled the place twice. Those hobgoblins aren't going to be found by giving up. No way! We gotta catch them by surprise. I'm telling you, there's nothing around here besides us. Can't you hear how quiet it is? So what? Maybe these dinosaurs have secret powers that keep them silent. We couldn't tell. Yes, we could. Everything makes its own sound. Some as loud as you. Whether we speak, clap, or step, everything we do produces a sound. Sound can even pass through barriers. It can easily go through solid, liquid, or gas. How do you know this stuff? Some of us actually listen to Daco's lectures. Sound is made up of waves that travel through the atmosphere or through a different kind of medium. Tiny particles are moved when the action occurs, producing a wave of vibrations. Particles are needed for sound waves to travel, so we can't hear anything in the vacuum of space because there isn't anything for the sound to travel on. Oh, is that what you mean when you say I'm spaced out? I knew there was a scientific reason I couldn't hear you. Since you were elsewhere, I'll fill you in. Daco also explained that sounds can have different pitches on a scale, high or low. <laughs> I know that one. Bigger people make bigger noises, and smaller people make no, smaller No, it's about ones. wave frequency. A high frequency will make a high-pitched sound, and shorter ones sound deeper. Even though we're the same size, our voices are different, and yours is higher. <sighs> How can you say we're the same height? I'm not counting your ears or your ego. <sighs> Shh, hear that? Mm. Look there! Get him! Uh, 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 I'm pretty sure it's a hobgoblin! Well, how do you know what a hobgoblin looks like? have a very like? scientific imagination! <laughs> Ooh, these are some super cool wall drawings. That one kind of looks like Barry. So neat. Maybe he'll be nice and, you know, let us escape. He saved us after you went and called him a hobgoblin. Uh, please forgive my friend. <laughs> Don't worry, he's not mad. He just can't understand us. I'm Crash, and this is Sidekick. And you are? What's your name? I think he's gesturing something. Like he's telling us his name. I know. Eerie. <laughs> know what? We should probably bring him with us. Pin will be too surprised to be mad. You will go. Walking with us to go meet all our friends. Understand? <laughs> May I present you all, from faraway lands, a hobgoblin. His name is Eerie. But I thought goblins were green. <laughs> Not that I've ever seen one. Uh, pleased to make your acquaintance. Where are my manners? <laughs> Care for a cup of tea? You gotta hear the story of how I found him. We were running and then I got him because I'm so fast. Not how it no, was. here's Eerie how it went. Actually you were making up crazy drawing. stories about how you're taller That's than irrelevant. me, which is clearly wrong. And also, Look at my ears. Look at that. It. it wasn't no, my idea. Not true. Hey, wait huh? a sec. That's a computer. It's complicated. It's part of our modern technology. Holy carrots. Just how do you know how to use that? Even I can't figure it out. Hey, I'm talking to you. Hmm? Crash, don't you get it? 
Eerie doesn't seem to hear us. Yeah, he's doing what I do to Daco. Oh, he's not ignoring you, Crash. He's different. It may be that he's hearing impaired. I don't understand. His ears look like they work okay. Our auditory system, or ears, are far more complicated than they appear. <laughs> Crash, I think you should listen. There's many parts to an ear, internal and external, and they work together. We can see the outer ear, which is made of the auricle and the ear canal. The auricle catches sound waves and sends them to a section called the eardrum. The eardrum is this little membrane. It processes the incoming sounds and sends them over to the middle ear. In the middle ear, we've got three bones to help us out. Their nicknames are the hammer, the anvil, and the stirrup. From there, sound travels to the inner ear. In there, we meet our ear's most important part, the cochlea. The cochlea is fascinating. That's where sounds get processed. We learn whether they're high or low, soft or loud. It processes the information for our brain. Once it goes to our brain, then we're able to understand it. Without a working cochlea, our brains can't process sound. It really is a vital organ. Oh, well. Hmm. But if he couldn't hear me talk, why didn't he just tell me that? If we aren't able to hear people talking to us, how would we know the sounds needed to respond? It's not something he would know. Our ears are just so complex. Eerie, how did you end up on the island? So he had a family and friends, and he could never understand them? Hey, do you want to go back to being alone over there? But that sounds terrible. Surely we can help him. There's a big world out there of adventures. There has to be something we can do to help. Hmm. Actually, I might know how. Scientists have invented a way to fix a cochlea that isn't working properly. It uses electrical impulses to help stimulate the cochlea. A sound receiver is placed beneath the skin, and a microphone with a speech processor is placed outside the ear. When sound comes to the ear, it goes through the microphone receiver and into the electrical implant. Those electrical impulses make their way to the brain. The microphone helps process the sound by teaming up with the speech processor and helping out that cochlea. That way, the brain is able to totally understand what it's hearing. This amazing device is called a cochlear implant. Holy carrots! Let's get him one of these things as soon as we can! Oh, it isn't as simple as putting on a hat crash. It's a real surgery, and it requires rehab and learning how to use it. It can be complicated. Indeed. And it's up to Eerie to decide this, alone. Then, do you want to go back to your island, or do you want the implant? Then it's a deal!
guys. What you doing? Wanna go hear Carlin play the piano? Or hear Wally's poems? Or my personal favorite, listen to nature. That sounds great, but maybe later. Now that I've learned to hear and talk, I want to tell people my story. I can finally tell people about my whole life. <laughs> I want to hear. Me too. Well, first, I'll start off my tale by telling you the ancient lore of the hobgoblins. Oh, my gosh. You mean Crash was right? Kidding. <laughs> <laughs> there was once a Hungarian-American scientist named Georg von Bekesche who worked with phones. His interest in phones helped fuel his desire to learn about the human ear and how we differentiate high sounds from low sounds. That's how he found out about the cochlea and what it does. He won the Nobel Prize for Medicine in 1961. can say with complete accuracy everything will happen in some uh, uh, why are we so close cool right I thought we'd be able to see much better how is it you don't understand when the Beetlejuice star completes its full cycle it's going to explode in 10 seconds Beetlejuice will increase its volume by thousands of times can't possibly fly any faster than the speed of light. Sphereoscope! This is technology from the future. We can stop time for everybody except you and me and think something up. Don't explain, my friend. Act now. Engage. Full stop. get everything back. It says here, to cancel time stopping, press this red button one time. Okay. Stop! We'll burn up! You suggest leaving everything like it is? I don't know. If Doku and Pin were in our shoes, they'd think something up for sure. Yep, but now it's our responsibility or something? I'm just a girl. I don't want to solve anything. I want to close my eyes, and when I open them back up, everything will be okay. Crash! Be a gentleman or something, and do something which will save us. Think of something. We don't have to think anything up. We just have to move the sphere jets farther away. It's working! <laughs> I've already moved it a couple. 
couple of millimeters. I'll go read up about this. Mathematics, thermodynamics, optics, hydraulics, physics. Physics? Ready, set, stop it. That's not working. But it's fun. While you were having a good time, I was able to learn something interesting. Look here. This is our spear jet, and this is Beetlejuice. Looks a little bit off. What's the difference? This is an example. Beetlejuice is expanding at the speed of light. That means we need to fly faster than the speed of light. Talk about a task. I thought about that at first, too. But it turns out there's nothing faster than the speed of light. This rule is constant in normal space when light travels from point A to point B. But if we can bend space like a piece of paper, then it might be possible to trick the light and get from A to B faster. Scientists haven't even imagined such an invention. It's called a warp engine. It bends space in front of spaceships and stretches it out behind them. That way, the spaceship can fly significantly faster than the speed of light. The problem is, this engine hasn't been invented yet. So far, it's just a theory. But if we read a few more books, we could probably do it. Hey, who am I explaining all this to, huh? going to grow up, huh? How can I even grow old if time has stopped? Crash, don't you understand we're trapped? Nothing we do will work. The only thing we can do is press that stupid button. The only thing that's not working is that you're not relaxing a little. I don't have tokos and pins knowledge. I've read all those science books over and over, and it's just no use to read them. No more physics and mathematics. Fraulein, you won't understand these exact sciences anyway. Do you think that's going to cheer me up? Ha! <laughs> My mathematical friend. Rules of the physic. That's phenomenal. Well, I'll be darned. How long have I been asleep? <laughs> We've been sitting here too long. Up and at him to exercise. One, two, three, four. <laughs>
Cosmic strings are unique objects in our universe which were only discovered very recently. The width of these strings is narrower than a single atom and the length can span the entire universe. Despite its tiny width, its density is enormous. One kilometer of string is approximately equal to the mass of an entire continent on Earth. But how will these things help us? Repair a violin? I don't think so. Cosmic strings have one surprising trait. They appeared right after the Big Bang, when the universe had just begun to quickly cool. The same way cracks appear in ice after freezing really quickly. In the first moments after our universe appeared, so laws of physics were not the same as they are now. Even the speed of light was several times quicker, don't you know, huh? Hey, what good times those were! There's still some of that time left in cosmic strings. The theory is that to this day, there's some anomalies with the speed of time in these strings. If we fly along one of these strings, then we can fly quicker than the speed of light. That's it. The autopilot is programmed to fly along the nearest cosmic string. It should work. Theoretically. And now we get to find out in practice! Wait! If it works, then promise me that you'll never grow up! <laughs> it's a deal! Uh, oh, uh, we've all been saved, but how? I don't remember anything. That's a side effect of stopping time. We don't remember anything that happened. That's a shame, as I'm curious how we were able to outrun the speed of light. And why did we need these strange accessories? I'm afraid that we will never know that. Hey, who put this on me? <laughs> it looks good on you. Ha ha, very funny. When will you ever grow up at last?